This is a talk that I gave recently in Connecticut to the Connecticut National Guard, the medical unit in the Connecticut National Guard, every one of whom has served in Afghanistan or Iraq in recent years. And it was of great interest because at this point, one uh, American uh, veteran uh, commits suicide every day. And the a number of the people in the audience were from the Groton Submarine Base, which is a medical unit that serves the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force in the state of Connecticut. And depression is an increasingly common uh, condition that is, needs treatment among uh, serving military and their families. Can we go to the first? I'd like to start with a personal experience. It was my first exposure to depression. I was 19 at the time, and I had no inkling of what depression was. I don't think I'm smart enough to be depressed on a regular basis, um, and I had never known anyone who was severely depressed. Uh, then we'll go on to, uh, uh, we won't really go through DSM-5 criteria because we've done that. Uh, and then we're going to have a very short uh, video, uh, which is a description by a distinguished surgeon at Yale New Haven Hospital of his personal involvement with depression at age 42. The purpose of this eight-minute video is not to talk about uh, ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, but rather to illustrate how an, a human being of high intelligence and, and exceptional motivation can be made totally dysfunctional by depression. Then we're going to briefly look at the World Health Organization study of 2004 uh, because it attempted to assess depression on a worldwide basis. And then we'll briefly review the four current theories as to what is the underlying cause for depression. The personal experience, um, I was an undergraduate and I signed up for a course in intensive um, conversational French. And the instructor was a delightful young Frenchman who had married a childhood sweetheart and they were raising two children in New Haven. Connecticut, and he and I became friends in the awkward way that you can become friends with somebody who is much older, wiser, more sophisticated than you are. But we did become friends. And we talked about all kinds of subjects, including in this courtyard you see here. And then um, as uh, Christmas time came around, everyone left New Haven to go home. And when I came back from Christmas vacation, uh, I had, was told that the course in intensive conversational French had been canceled. And I said, what do you mean canceled? And the answer was, well, haven't you heard? Heard what? Um, uh, Pr Professor Bouchard uh, on New Year's Eve committed suicide by hanging himself in the, <clears throat> in the house that he was living in with his wife and uh, two children. I had no way of processing that fact. Uh, I had nothing but questions. Nothing like that had ever happened uh, to me before. What must his wife and children be thinking? Um, uh, what, what was, what, why didn't some of his friends and colleagues in the French department uh, spot this and somehow head it off? Why didn't he talk to me? How could this conceivably happen in a, a major university of this kind. Well, of course, since then, I've learned a number of things about what went on uh, that day. He became so hopeless in his own mind, he could see no alternatives uh, to the pain, the psychic pain that he was feeling, other than uh, ending it by hanging himself in the basement. Of course, we all know that there are always alternatives, but he couldn't see any, and there weren't any intervening forces to get him moving in a different direction. That was my first exposure. There have been lots of others since, and uh, bit by bit, I've learned a tiny bit about the subject. Next one. 
Here are the definitions. We've really gone through all of these, and so we won't repeat that at this time. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, this next uh, portion is an eight-minute uh, presentation given by a distinguished uh, medical doctor. Um, it's a, an autobiographical sketch of what depression can do to a highly intelligent, uh, well-trained um, surgeon. And um, uh, we'll do that next, and then I'll explain a bit as to what uh, Dr. Newland has achieved since this period. The presentation was done in 2001. It is a description of what happened to him at age 43 uh, many years prior. He gives the actual year. Talk is that it was if all of the tightly coiled wires in my head had been disconnected. I discussed that with the head of the mood disorders unit at NIH in Bethesda, and he said that's what happens when um, electroshock therapy is applied. It causes, it starts focally, and then it causes an epileptic uh, seizure. And in that seizure, all of the neurotransmitters in the brain are discharged simultaneously, which basically modifies the wiring of the brain. And uh, that isn't a permanent, necessarily a permanent change, because people do require maintenance therapy after they have received uh, electroshock therapy. The maintenance therapy frequently takes the part of further ECT treatments and well, as well as uh, medication. But the point that uh, the head of the NIH uh, program wanted to bring out was there is a disconnection of existing uh, circuits as a consequence of the treatment. Now, I want to remind you the purpose of this eight-minute uh, autobiographical sketch is not to describe ECT, but rather to show what depression can do to the functionality of an otherwise highly intelligent, uh, well-trained, highly motivated uh, person. Next one, please. What is the impact of depression in, according, in accordance with the uh, World Health Organization? What is the War World Health Organization? It's 180 countries. 120 of which each year report statistics for their nation as to uh, what has caused disability. And you already know there are two kinds of disability that can be caused by depression. One was Professor Bouchard, that's not his real name, who committed suicide on New Year's Eve. And the other is the uh, creeping uh, dysfunctionality that uh, Dr. Newland uh, spoke of still alive but not, a, not really functioning. And they, the unit of measurement that the World Health Organization uses is called a daily, which is a disability associated life year. So if somebody spends six months in the Hartford Hospital, that's a half year of disability. If the same person subsequently commits suicide, that is a permanent loss of, dis of ability. Next. In 2004, the World Health Organization did a special study. Um, it was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, and the purpose was to analyze the data that had been received from the 120 countries uh, and assign uh, uh, causes of disability. In 2004, unipolar depression, not counting uh, bipolar depression, which is a much, much uh, uh, smaller um, about 2% of the total. Just unipolar depression by itself was in third place after re respiratory infections and diarrheal diseases worldwide. 2030, the World Health Organization estimates that unipolar depression will have, been, will have increased to first place in terms of causing disability. Uh, ischemic heart disease and traffic accidents will be in place two and three. Next. What are the principal causes of depression? Um, there appear to be four leading causes. They're quite different in character. The oldest of them is the monoamine uh, hypothesis. Uh, what are monoamines? There are three, uh, serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. 
Then the original theory was that, um, why don't we go to the next one? The monoamine hypothesis basically is not enough serotonin, norepinephrine, or dopamine in the bloodstream of the patient. Uh, and so the cure is kind of simple. Take steps to increase the level of serotonin, if that's the problem, or nor norepinephrine, or dopamine. And there are various, a variety of medications that we use on a regular basis. Um, next one. The glutamatergic hypothesis is a relatively new one. The, what, is, what does the word glutamatergic mean? It means related to glutamate. What's glutamate? Glutamate is the principal excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain. It's less well known these days by the American public than GABA. GABA, gamma, gamma, Aminobutyric acid is the principal inhibitory neurotransmitter. Glutamate is its excitatory offset. And the basic hypothesis is that too much glutamate at one of the several types of receptors for glutamate is causing the problem. So if, uh, and the result is too much excitation in the prefrontal cortex of the brain. Uh, so the cure clearly would be to block that NMDA receptor and reduce the amount of excitation in the prefrontal cortex. Next. What are the treatments that we typically use uh, for uh, treating uh, depression? Uh, the first step in most cases is uh, Prozac, uh, Zoloft, those are SSRIs. There are five traditional ones and a new one, Vibrid. So I guess we can say there are six SSRIs, at least six that I know about. And a second step would be to, if, if the SSRIs don't really do the job, to move to SNRIs, uh, serotonin norepinephrine uh, reuptake inhibitors. The RI refers to a reduction in the speed of reuptake uh, and reuptake basically takes the neurotransmitter out of the uh, synapse of the brain where it's supposed to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. A third step is to add atypical antidepressants. Uh, one of the best known ones is, is Welbutrin, uh, also known as bupropion. And then um, if uh, mood control is needed, as in bipolar uh, condition, Antiepileptics are used frequently, valproic acid or carbamazepine. And if all of that is unsuccessful, um, Dr. Chaudhry has been quite uh, uh, successful at, at uh, creating cocktails of the foregoing medications. In this clinic, psychotherapy is uh, often, if not always, used concurrently. Uh, a counselor either on the uh, payroll here or elsewhere uh, is treating the patient uh, concurrent with an effort here to get uh, stabilization of the parent using a combination of the meds up above. Uh, ECT typically follows. Uh, uh, ECT, it's the old name, electroconvulsive uh, therapy. There's no more convulsion because uh, the uh, muscle relaxants are used but there is a seizure that is created. That's the purpose of it. And as you already know, that kind of disconnects the wiring. And lastly, and we're gonna talk more about this, it's the latest uh, development, the use of ketamine, which is a, a uh, well-known um, uh, uh, medication used in, in, in particular in pediatric uh, uh, circles. Uh, it, it's a, an anesthetic which is used in much lower doses for antidepression. Next. Uh huh. Okay. Well, and I don't think we're going to finish. Um, next. Well, I think you've already heard enough about ECT. Let's go to the next one. The glutamate receptors. I said there were several different types. Um, the one that counts most is the NMDA, that's in second place. Um, AMPA is also important. And what uh, the uh, ketamine does, which we'll get to, 
is it, it blocks the NNDA receptor and it increases uh, neurotransmission through the AMPA. Those bold ones are the ones that count. Next. That is a schematic drawing of the glutamatergic system. We don't need to dwell on it. Go on. The uh, third major hypothesis, which has been developed in recent years by Dr. Hyman, is the systemic hypothesis. Basically, it says that bodily disorders are what destabilize the brain. And he has outlined three different types of bodily disorders that have severe impacts on mood. Uh, since systemic inflammation, uh, vitamin and mineral deficiencies, and heavy metals toxicity, all three of which can be treated. Next. Systemic inflammation, these are the principal causes of inflammation. Infections, stress, too much sugar, toxins, autoimmune disease, and insulin resistance. Next. Vitamin mineral deficiencies, you've heard from earlier about several of these, folate B6, B12, vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, and selenium. Next. Heavy metal toxicity, uh, mercury is a terribly important one. And according to the World Health Organization, the principal source of mercury in the human race is uh, amalgam fillings, sometimes known as silver fillings. Uh, fish, lead, uh, and paint and smoke, of course, can uh, cause that. Next. Trauma is the fourth uh, uh, major source of depression. Uh, I started uh, by exploring uh, trauma in combat veterans, and I found to my surprise that trauma is much more common in women in this country. One out of three women is uh, sexually assaulted in their lifetime. One out of four is raped, uh, and very few of those cases are reported or pursued in the uh, legal system. That's it.